Uh, welcome everyone. Today we're going to look at this fundamental theorem for laminals. Okay, so let's jump to our doc cam and we'll get going there. All right, so here we go. So let's kind of think back. Let's recall back from our Calc 1 days, right? Math 28 here, NPC. Our fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part. As it's referred to, right, part two. We kind of identified that, okay, if we have this integral, this definite integral of a function f of x from a to b, dx, we can evaluate that definite integral by finding its antiderivative, capital F, evaluating at d minus antiderivative f, evaluated, right, or that kind of antiderivative function, evaluated that the difference of the limits, okay? And so we can go through that work and we can find the antiderivative, capital F, right? That F prime of X was equal to F of X. As long as we can find that antiderivative, then we can just plug in, evaluate that definite integral, okay? So now, For our line integrals, okay, our math 20C, our third semester calculus, we're looking at these integrals, and let's look at vector field, f dotted dr, okay? So we have this vector field, f dr, and so what we're kind of considering, kind of getting it into this context of our fundamental theorem, I think 20A, what if that vector field F is a gradient vector of some function? Let me just say we've got an RDR, right? Well, we have our curve, our path. Here's our T. And that DR component, right, was that R prime of T dt, right? And then that gradient vector, f, right? That's if we have some function, f of x, f of x, y, f of x, y, z, whatever it might be, then this gradient vector would be the vector taking the partial of f with respect to x, partial of f with respect to y, partial of f with respect to z. Again, we could do this in two dimensions as well to build up those expressions, okay? And so if we can identify that that vector field f is some gradient vector, right, where those are just the components the partials of some function f of x, y, z. Well, then what our fundamental theorem says, right, again, if that's a derivative, this is like our antiderivative. So when I go through, or when we go through that work, this is going to be equivalent to taking our like for our function, evaluating at our final point on a value of our function, evaluate that initial point where we go here, 
that R of B R of A, right? Or in this case, let me sneak back up here. P goes between A and B, okay? Because we're gonna get here our delta, our gradient grad F dotted with that R prime of T, DT, there we are. So what if we had done 16.2, evaluating those line integral through that vector field like so. And so our the discussion here with these fundamental theorem problems is are we going to be able to find this function? Okay. So let's go through this, this process here. Right. Our big question is can we find a function? f of x, y, or if we have three variables, f of x, y, z, such that that vector field is actually equal to the gradient vector for that function, OK? So can we kind of find this antiderivative for that gradient vector. And again, depending on whether we have one variable, two variables, three variables, we can go forward, okay? And so if this is our gradient vector to be that vector field, this function f of x, y, or f of x, y, z, we call this our potential function. This is kind of like our antiderivative, if you will, back in 28. Okay. Because again, thinking about this motion, that kinetic energy that we get from this function, this is the potential before we set it up into motion, okay? That kind of idea. All right, and so then, some more language here. We call a vector field F a conservative vector field, right, it's conservative if we can find a function, right, a potential function f such that when I look at the gradient of f, it's equal to that vector field, okay? And so that vector field f it could be some function like so. And again, if we have a k component x, y, z, we can do that as well. So if we can find that potential function, we can use our fundamental theorem of calculus, fundamental theorem of line integrals, and instead of having to go through parameterizing, really looking at how those components come together to integrate, we can just look at our terminal point, our initial point, take the difference of those values, let's plug into that potential function, that antiderivative function, 
at f x y. Okay, and so looking at that, we can do a quick check. to see if f is conservative, right? one part will be to actually find that function. But another way of looking so is if we are checking if when we look at the partial of p, right, that x to the i component with respect to y, is that going to be equal to the partial of Q with respect to X? So this is kind of like checking that our mixed partials are equal. And then show that functions continue and so on, and it kind of builds backwards. Okay. Because this component, you can look at grad F. If this is like our P and Q, when I take the derivative respect to Y, DF, DX, DY, DQ, DX, right? That's DF, DY, then DX. So it's those F of XY, F of YX. Those mixed partials, those are equal. Those are going to be equal. If that's true, then we are going to be able to find a function f okay so if these are identical right the expressions match in some other cases we might get them to be constants but right if we evaluate those partials and we see that the expression the results are identical then we can go back to find F such that that gradient of F is equal to that vector here. Okay, placing these together. All right. And so doing so, bring this over here. Let's look at this example. Let's check first. determine if this vector field f is conservative if it is find the function f such that that green of f is equal to the vector field. Okay. So let's check out this problem. We'll start with four, page 1134. My vector field f, x, y is equal to i squared times 2x, i plus 2x, y, j. Okay. So I'm looking at this. This is my P of X, Y. Here's our Q of X, Y. So when I look at the partial of P with respect to Y, that partial of Y squared minus 2X, that's equal to 2y minus 0, or just 2y. Power over here, that's x doesn't match the variable, so it's 0. dq dx, the derivative with respect to x, 2xy. y is a constant, it's going to follow me. x to the first power drops away to 1, right? So it's 2 times 1 times y, or 2y. So since these are indeed 
equal. This means that that vector field f of x, y is conservative. That means we'd be able to apply, we can use that fundamental theorem, but in order to do that query calculation, we actually still need to do some work. We have to find that potential function, that lowercase i, okay? So in this case, now let's find f x, y, okay? So again, the gradient of f is equal to f. Our vector field, I'm going to put in that in bracket form, y squared minus 2x for the i, that p of xy, 2xy for the j for the y component. Okay? So again, this is my df dx, this is my df dy, or likewise, this is my f sub x, f sub y. So we have f sub x. That means that our function f of x, y is going to be the integral of that partial x with respect to x, right? You get the value of the function. This is the partial derivative, so I'm going to take my, my integral with respect to x. So in this case, if I do so, we're going to integrate y squared minus 2x dx, y squared is a constant, so I get an x in front, minus 2x, that's just x squared. I think we don't have limits of integration here. Typically, we'd have a constant of integration. But in this case, because we're expecting that this function really is a function of x and y, we can add some function of y. Because when I take my derivative with respect to x, Anything depending on just y alone goes to zero. So instead of a constant integration, we get a function to add. Okay? But now we have to figure out what does that g of y look like? So in this case, we have this potential, this idea that our function starts to look like x minus y squared. I think we could rearrange minus x squared plus gy. But then to match our gradient vector, let me zoom out a little bit, we need df dy to be equal to 2xy. I'm going to take that partial. I need to make sure I get this component for my gradient vector. OK? So in that case, taking my partial with respect to y of our function, squared minus x squared plus g of y. We're going to get here f sub y is equal to, now I'll take my derivative respect to y, 2xy to the first minus 0 plus this g prime of y, whatever that might look like. And so that f sub y, that partial, was supposed to be 2xy 
equaling to x y plus g prime of y. And so looking at that expression, you can subtract this over. And so g prime of y must be zero. In other cases, we might get some expression of just y. And we can integrate, OK, and get a value for y. But if the derivative is equal to 0, that must mean that this function is just a constant, k or c, whatever you like. So finally, our function, f of xy, that potential function, x y squared minus x squared plus k. This can be any constant for ease in later calculation when we actually apply when we get music in the fundamental theorem. we let that constant be equal to zero. But really we can keep it like our indefinite interval from before, some constant there, but we can let it go. And you can check with this potential function, when we look at that gradient vector, this is exactly equal to our vector field. So in mind of that work, so instead of having to go through and have, oops, sorry. Path C going from A, B to C, D, let's say, when we're taking our integral across C of that vector field F dotting with dr, we parameterize if we know that that vector field is conservative, then instead we could evaluate our potential function from that final point, take away our initial point. Terminal ending point, take away initial. And so the work becomes looking for that potential function by using the relation trend interval. And that's only possible if those mixed partials are equal. Okay, so that's our first check. If not, if we got something different here, if this was like 2y, this one was 2x, then we have to go through what we did in 16.2 and actually build up that parameterization of our curve. Let's see, Let's do that work for dr, get those components, and evaluate in that method. But if we can find that potential function, we kind of transfer that work from parameterizing into finding that potential function, and we can evaluate there. Okay? And so then, as a consequence, or as a nice kind of action of this that result, hopefully I spoke the word consequence, right? 
for closed paths, right? So in this case, again, in three dimensions as well, if our path, whatever it does, ends, right, we're making some loop. We can go around a box even, a triangle. Right, we start, go around, go around, and we finish here. Right, so if we have this closed loop or starting and ending, at the same point, okay, or a conservative vector field, that integral over that closed path, Okay, so for that closed path or that gradient, right, that's going to be equal to zero. A scalar value zero is zero is up. It all cancels, if you will. Because again, if we're thinking about terminal minus initial, if we're starting and ending at the same value at the same point, those are just going to zero up. Okay. Right, our terminal, take away our initial, is the same location, so it zeroes out. So again, if we can see that we have this closed pathway, all right, and it's a conservative vector field, then even if we're not even having to find that potential function, so if you have a closed path, conservative vector field, that's just going to be zero. So it really shortens down the work even more so, so we don't have to worry about calculus, but if we did calculate it all out, taking those different branches, evaluating this curve, how will we do parameterize the RFT, you'll get zero the same way, okay? All right, so I'll leave it to that. We have some examples in the book, examples hopefully in those slides to check that trial out. All right.